So I, I come to you today as an artist, a digital artist, and one that I think is slightly different than a lot of artists from prior generations. And to start off, I want to show you my relic. This is a drawing I made in kindergarten, in a computer class, in a public school, computer art. And this was done with a program called Logos. And there was a little turtle triangle, some of you may remember this, and you didn't draw with a mouse, you drew with math, you drew with uh, programming. And so these were my drawings. These are how I learned to make imagery, just along with the crayons and the colored pencils and all of the things that normal children kind of learn to draw with. So bec because I sort of ended up as a digital artist, I found these during grad school. At the time, um, I was really interested in thinking about what is behind all of the artwork. And so if you don't know, um, binary code is the ones and zeros that run at the base level pretty much all of the digital technology. And that really was something I was interested in as a language. And we have some imagery going on behind me that I'm going to talk about in a second. But basically, this, this binary code, the ones and zeros, ons and offs, was used as a way to represent you know, meaning in digital life. So I was wondering, what would happen if binary code started to change, started to evolve? What if there were mistakes? And this is what code words, my first body of work I want to show to you today, started to look like. So these circles behind you are what is making up the artwork. And for these installation shots, you're going to see these really large photographic installations. And so the one behind me, this fallacious effigies, this is a 13-foot tall series of images that were up on a wall. But really closely, they're kind of these degrading drawings of strands of silk. And what I was doing to make this work, sort of dealing with the binary code as a language, is hand-scribing different uh, translations of words onto pieces of silk and then destructing them. So sort of mixing the analog and digital, that's something that I've liked to do in my work. And with these, I was then dissolved it in bleach, don't try this at home, it's very bad for you. Um, photographed it, and then ended up making these installations where the layout of the piece ends up being more binary code. So you can translate the titles back into the way that these circles, the, the somethings and the nothings um, in the imagery of these. And so this idea of using binary code as a language is something that really runs behind everything that we have, cell phones, iPads, but you don't really think about it every day. And one of the things that was really inspiring me was you know, what would happen if, by chance, things got messed up. And as an artist, I'd like to leave things open a little bit. So all of these different installations are based on these kind of two-word titles that are little mini sort of poems in terms of the language. Using a really old, 100-year-old thesaurus, I was kind of using language that we don't use every day, and being able to kind of play with the way words sound in a way that weren't really meant to be with the computer. And so the reason why I'm showing you this stuff is because it really led up to sort of the Twitter art that I've been dealing with. And these binary code um, imagery was something that has sort of stayed with me as an artist since probably undergrad. And it's something that I've been using as a language consistently. And a lot of artists will do that in their work and have kind of different ideas. But in addition to just being an artist, I am really interested in science, in technology, and kind of some of the technical work that's going on. So this project kind of spawned a second project with a scientist friend of mine, Justin Meyer, who's an evolutionary biologist. And so he came up with a one sentence uh, titled, Mutation, the Genetic Fuel for Progress, is usually destructive, based on his research. And we collaborated, and this was in a shipping container in the Three Rivers Arts Festival in 2008 in Pittsburgh. And there were 256 circles on both sides of the shipping container that were prints. And it, they spelled out that sentence of Justin's research. And little to my knowledge, this is what his research looked like. And I did not see this until after the artwork was all finished. So there was kind of some nice harmonies in what the visuals ended up relating to the science and the art at the same time. So these are, these are some of the details from that. But basically what happens, people would come into the shipping container and they could buy a print for the wonderfully affordable price of $20 and immediately take it with them. And the order in which all of those prints were taken were kept track of. And so as each one or zero went away, it changed what the translation was going to be. 
And so as a part of this installation, there's a handwritten kind of uh, mural of what the translation changed to. And you'll see in a second that just removing one, one or zero completely changes half the sentence into gibberish. You can't read it. So the fact that all of our digital technology works and functions is really kind of amazing. That you know, if we lose one of those things, the meaning goes away. And so this was a video that was playing in the back of the shipping container that was also kind of spelling out uh, that sentence in binary code, this time in video. So all of that stuff led to this project with the idea of, I wanted to make Twitter portraits. I wanted to find a way to use text to make imagery. So kind of going back to that binary code idea, turning each letter into blinks of light. And I was lucky enough to do this with the At First Fans project on Twitter through the Brooklyn Museum. And they, they don't, it doesn't uh, exist any longer, unfortunately. The archive is there. But they'd commission an artist one a month to make art on Twitter. And so what we have there is the same thing as basically blinks of light. And so these blinks of light would spin and would then be photographed. And so these are some of the first Twitter portraits that happened. And I was really astonished by the project because I was asking people about their digital identity. And the patterns that started to show up were really intriguing to me. And so I decided to continue on with the project and go into pop culture sources. So this is Barack Obama's portrait. And I personally don't have access to photograph Barack Obama in an official capacity um, as a president. And so the tweets that are out there, he does tweet. And kind of using those letters to make imagery. So these are all long exposure photographs that are about five seconds of those LEDs blinking about as fast as I showed them. And this one I especially like. Um, this is Lady Gaga, and you can see there, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that. But the reason why I like this is sort of playing with the language of tweets. This is the tweet that came after that tweet from Lady Gaga. And basically, I think I just tushy tweeted by mistake. Sorry. So this is Lady Gaga's butt tweet. And I found this to be really interesting. Visually, it made a pattern that I was really drawn to aesthetically. And so I continued to kind of see what the patterns were when there were either hashtags that were similar, uh, this is another one, and sort of, I make each of these photographs based on a little a program with a thing called an Arduino that blinks the light. So this is a, a Katy Perry's tweet to Rihanna as work. So it's a very short tweet, and you can sort of see the patterns. So looking at the patterns of language kind of make these visual patterns. And in the tweets themselves, I have it so that hashtags come up red. And so when there is a hashtag, you can kind of start to see portions of the tweet that would end up being red. Uh, at symbols are orange, so if you have somebody's name. And then also kind of putting it in that quotes are purple. But you can even see here with the repetition of letters, you get really interesting patterns. And so these are photographs where the title is usually shown on a little title card in the gallery, not overlaid on it uh, on the tweet like this, but in multimedia settings, this is sort of how it works out. So that the, the image, the abstract Twitter portrait, doesn't have the text on it. You'd have to, that's just the title, so you can look down. So it's sort of being able to see both of those things that you can get an idea of what a tweet might look like had it turned into visual instead of just being text. So with this, it's kind of, you know, think about what you're tweeting or what you're posting on Facebook. Do you think about your digital identity and what it, what it puts for you out there in the world? And, you know, some of the things, like this is CNN, it's, it's, you see, CNN's not a single person, but yet there's this organization that has an individual identity. And this one is also CNN, but talking about a few other uh, people that tweet, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and kind of seeing just the pattern that it makes. And that's artistically something that I'm really, really drawn to, that having digital art that's beautiful and has lots of meaning behind it and isn't just a way to do something. So I'll leave you with this one, which is from an artist. It's actually a fake Twitter feed of the artist Jenny Holzer, who's a text artist. This isn't actually her. But abstraction is a type of decadence. And thank you very much for letting me show you my work today. Thanks. <laughs>